Hi, welcome to the 14 day weather forecast. Fine conditions have returned to much UK and in the south it is hot. But can we expect these conditions to last as we head through the next two weeks? Well, as usual, I'm going to start by taking a look at the view across Japan, the North Atlantic. The animation runs from 18 GMT, Tuesday the 30th. To begin with, we've got an area of high pressure sitting across the country, and that's what's bringing the fine and summery weather. But as I run the sequence, what we see is that some thundery showers push up into the southeast, and then more widely across England and Wales on Thursday. It's through the weekend, though, that the big change starts to shape up because after those thundery showers clear away on Thursday, Friday should be mostly dry and warm again. But through Saturday, there's a nasty area of low pressure centered there to the northwest. Weather fronts associated with it are pushing southeastwards across the UK, and much cooler air is falling in from the west. So running this through, what we see is that weather front clears southeastwards, but then high pressure still has some influence in the south for times so it could turn quite warm again. Later on, it's an unsettled picture. Showers or longer spells of rain, particularly in the west and the northwest. The driest conditions still tending to be in the south and the east, although there is the potential through the latter stages of the first week for some heavy rain to affect southern Britain. Quite a lot happening there. In terms of upper air temperatures and the jet stream profile, here's the sequence from the same GFS computer model run. The orange shading there over the southern half of the UK to start off with shows very warm air aloft. These are forecast temperatures at about 1500 meters above our heads. The jet stream fragmented and really to the north of the UK. But as I run it, what we see is the jet starts to get its act together, that deep area of low pressure to the northwest, and then the jet stream really is pushing further southwards. It's not straightforward, the progression, but the trend is for it to be pushing further southwards as we head through the week. And by the end here, Wednesday the 7th, we've got that area of low pressure centered just to the northwest, the green shading showing cooler air covering all parts of the United Kingdom by this point. So lots taking place, a few forecast charts to show the conditions which we can expect. This is on Wednesday, it's warm or very warm in southern and central regions, 27 being shown here, but I think temperatures may well be a little bit higher and I'll come back to that in a moment. Cooler though in the northwest, Northern Ireland 21, Southern Scotland there 21 as well, but a mostly dry picture. Forwards to Thursday, showers developing across England and Wales. I don't think the GFS here has really shown the extent of the risk of thundery downpours. They will be hit and miss, but if you catch one, you could have a lot of rain in a very short space of time, the potential for some flooding to take place. Still very warm though, where the sun shines, 27 there in the southeast, and once more, I think this is a little bit on the low side. Forwards to Friday, as I noted, it's a mostly dry picture at this point. In much of the UK, there is some rain there in the northwest, but certainly across England and Wales, Eastern Scotland as well. It's dry and still warm, very warm in the south. Through the weekend, though, that rain clear southeastwards. Saturday afternoon here, it's dry and sunny across the UK, but you see temperatures now have dipped down significantly. Maximums of 23 in the south, 17s, 18s, perhaps in the northern half of the UK. Finally, on Sunday, mostly dry here. Temperatures not that far from the average. 14 in the northwest of in the Scottish Highlands, down to about up to about 24 in the southeast of England. So lots taking place through the first week. But as I mentioned, I think the forecast temperatures there are a little bit on the low side from a GFS model. This is a chart from the higher resolution UKV. It's for Wednesday, it's showing forecast maximum temperatures at about 3 p.m. 28 to 30 Celsius being shown in southern and central parts of Britain. So we could have several days through the first part of a week where temperatures reach or even exceed 30 Celsius in southern Britain. Cooler, of course, as you head northwards, particularly into Scotland and Northern Ireland. Thundery downpours on Thursday, as I said, I don't think the GFS is really capturing the risk, at least not on the charts which I showed. 
so these are from the UKV 9 GMT on Thursday it's got downpours there really in eastern parts of England some very heavy rain if this is correct then the chart on the right is for 3 p.m and by this point the risk of those thundery showers has migrated a little bit further westwards but it's really England and Wales which are most at risk hit and miss is the key takeaway from this you may well miss them completely have a dry day and wonder what all the fuss is about but if you are clobbered by one or more you'll certainly know about it rainfall in terms of the aggregates for days not to five here are the ecm and gfs predictions ecm on the left and gfs on the right they don't once more capture i think the rain risk from these thunderstorms particularly well because totals could be significantly higher we could see 30 40 50 60 or even 70 millimeters being recorded in a few places moving forwards to the uh, 0 to 10 day charts a more familiar pattern now is beginning to show its hand wettest in the west and the northwest the orange shade in there in western scotland indicating rain totals of about 80 to 100 millimeters through the 0 to 10 day period so in more general terms how do the deterministic models compare with each other as we head towards the end of week one here is the gfs low pressure there centered just the northwest with this type of pattern there is the possibility at least of some very warm air still being pulled up into the southeastern corner east anglia as well maybe but it's quite an unsettled patch pattern the canadian model similar as is the German ICON model and the combined European ECM. All of these do have that possibility, as I say, that there may well still be some very warm air being pulled up into the southeast, southeast of England, East Anglia, but it's quite an unsettled theme which they're showing. Same with the UK Met Office. In fact, this one's a little bit different more widespread rain probably across central parts there maybe pushing down into the southeast as well with that warm air still flirting with that part of the uk but taking them all together it's an unsettled pattern which is uh, developing towards the end of the first week low pressure just send it to the northwest the wettest conditions probably in the west and the north but the chance that weather fronts could become slow moving over southern britain and some heavy bursts of rain moving north eastwards along them it is something to keep an eye on so does that rather mixed pattern continue as we head through uh, week two of course it's just about the trends and probabilities of this range the 16 day ensemble plot for london so the gefs model suggests that upper air temperatures will be close to the average through the second week the thick black line there is a 30 year norm the thick purple line is the uh, model average so you can see they are close together throughout the period but it's just worth highlighting that one or two runs are still bringing in very warm air aloft at times at least into southern britain as we head through week two so i wouldn't discount the possibility of some thundery activity through this period the chance of some high temperatures still but on balance it looks fairly close to average not completely dry still some rain spikes showing up one or two very big ones which could indicate thundery conditions all in all though a reasonable amount of dry periods have been signaled here the two meter temperature data tables for london this orange shading dominates throughout week two 21 to 25 celsius there's still some red still a little bit of a pink there those are runs going for over 30 celsius but if anything it looks like there's an increasing amount of confidence that temperatures through the second week will be a little bit lower than they have been recently overnight lows 11 to 15 being dominant so still double figures of course up to manchester close to or slightly below average this time on the top half of the chart there are more runs dipping below that 30 year average but still a few which bring in significantly warmer air there are more rain spikes on this plot from the were on the london one so rain risk ongoing just again highlighting that towards the end of the first week and the early part of the second week the risk of that quite significant risk of rain so it could be quite wet for a time maybe drier from around the 9th of august at least the chance of drier periods increasing there 
Uh, the two meter temperature data tables for Manchester, fairly consistent with the London ones. Lower maximums, of course, in the northwest here, 16 to 20, as opposed to 21 to 25, being the dominant color on the uh, London chart. The overnight lows, mostly 11 to 15. Towards the end there, there is something of a cooling trend showing up more of the runs showing overnight values dipping into single figures. Of course, we are now at the time of year when the nights are starting to lengthen quite rapidly, so you would expect some lower uh, overnight temperatures to start showing up in the forecast models. Up to Glasgow, a very similar profile across the top, close to or slightly below the average, but there are lots of rain spikes there on the bottom part of the plot. It's quite a wet picture and there are some very big ones as well. So significant amounts of rain in the northwest look likely according to this data through the second week. The two meter temperature data tables for Glasgow, it's a fair amount of orange and quite a lot of yellow for the daytime maximum. So 11 to 15 or 16 to 20, just continuing that cooling trend as you head further north across the UK. The overnight lows, 11 to 15, were actually quite high here for this part of uh, the UK since we're so far north. So relatively high overnight lows, still some green there later and, and the amount of green increases later on. But all in all, overnight values are quite high, I think. The rainfall probability charts from the ECM model uh, for the second week. The orange shade in there in the northwest shows where the greatest chance of five millimeters or more of rain falling on a given day is. So drier as you head southwards and eastwards, it's, it's suggesting that the, the weather is going to be coming in from the Atlantic. And the same general theme is shown for the following three days. But I think the takeaway here is that there is a significant risk of rain, particularly in the west and the northwest. And that message is reinforced by the mean surface level pressure plots, this one from the GEFS model, Friday the 9th of August, high pressure sitting to the southwest, having more influence across southern and central regions. The Atlantic really battering the northwest with areas of low pressure close to Iceland, between Iceland and Scotland at least, bringing more active weather fronts across the north of the UK. And the ECM ensemble shows something quite similar, really high pressure there to the southwest, low pressure areas to the northwest. But as ever, these charts are generated by averaging out all of the individual runs within the ensemble, so a range of solutions are is, is still very much possible. This really just gives an indication of the general pressure trends as we head through the second week. So to summarize, week one, it's a fine start, but thunderstorms develop across England and Wales. They bring the potential for some torrential downpours, but they will be very hit and miss. Once they clear away, it's dry for a time, but through Friday and the weekend, it becomes more changeable. Low pressure to the northwest and weather fronts associated with it push southeastwards across the UK. They bring risk of heavy rain to the west and the northwest. But there is that chance of rain becoming more widespread for a time towards the end of the week. After the hot start, temperatures dip back towards the norm. Week two, mixed on the whole, wettest in the northwest with dry periods more frequent in the south. Temperatures often close to the average in the north, but still the chance of it being warm in the south at times. And there is that low but not negligible risk of hot and thundery days in the south and the east. So, there we have it, a very mixed outlook for the next two weeks, the hot start in the south, then more changeable conditions returning, but that warm air probably staying close to the southeast for much of a period, and whilst that is the case, there is always a chance at least of it pushing back in from the continent, so it is something to keep an eye on. Well, anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video and found it useful. As ever, if you did, then please consider hitting the like button below 
and subscribe into the channel if you haven't done so already. And remember, of course, to stay up to date with the day-to-day -day weather developments by checking out the weatheroutlook.com website. Thanks very much now. Bye. <laughs>